Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss and it is Monday, so it's meal prep day. I have breakfast, lunch, and an amazing dessert. Actually, all three of these recipes absolute perfection, healthy, great way to stay on track. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I do a meal prep every Monday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Down in the description box, you will find my recipe website. That is where you can find all of today's recipes as well as nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is how I have lost and maintained my 140 pound weight loss as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. So let's jump in to this week's meal prep. For my breakfast this week, I am making protein banana breakfast cookies. I'm so excited for these. Like I mentioned in my grocery haul, I have been craving a breakfast cookie, something simple, portable, easy. So let me show you what you'll need. So the first thing you're going to need is protein powder. I'm going to use my favorite protein powder in the world, and that is Clean Simple Eats. And this is the Simply Vanilla. You want some type of vanilla protein powder. This one or Devotions Angel Food Cake are my go-tos when it comes to baking. Clean Simple Eats though is my all-time favorite. So I'll link both Devotion and Clean Simple Eats down below for you with the discount. I, again, I'm going to use Simply Vanilla. You can use walnuts or pecans. I'm going to go ahead and do walnuts, rolled oats, reduced sugar craisins, one egg, salt, baking powder, and then the recipe calls for one large banana. I have two pretty small bananas, and we're just going to mash those up. So to get started on our breakfast cookies, into a medium bowl, we're adding one cup of rolled oats, two scoops of our Clean Simple Eats vanilla protein, quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and a pinch of salt, and then we're going to mix that together. Go ahead and set the dry mixture aside and grab your banana and your egg. So you're going to add your large banana to a small bowl. Go ahead and completely mash that up. Then you're going to add your egg and again, just mash that all together. We're going to add our banana and egg mixture to our dry ingredients and stir to combine. And a half of a cup of those reduced sugar craisins and fold those in. And then we're going to spoon our mixture into eight cookies. Using the back of our spoon, I'm just going to shape these the best that I can into a cookie shape, a circle. And then we're placing them into a 350 degree oven for about eight to 10 minutes. What we're looking for is the edges to be a little bit brown and them to be baked through, but these are going to be a soft cookie. Just make sure you're not over baking. So I just pulled the breakfast cookies out of the oven. Sorry if you hear the microwave, my squash is in there. But these look amazing. These smell absolutely delicious. These are huge. All you have to do is allow them to cool and then you can dive right in. So I'm going to have one of these for breakfast every day. I'll probably pair this with some other type of protein, maybe a fruit, but this is going to be my breakfast for the week. For my lunch this week, I'm making a baked meatball meal prep with spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash is currently cooking in the microwave, but let me show you what else you'll need for the recipe. You're going to need salt and pepper, marinara of your choice. If you're on Weight Watchers, I would recommend a zero point marinara so that it doesn't add additional points. Basil, oregano, Parmesan cheese. I'm using 96% ground beef, light shredded mozzarella, and one egg. So for the meatballs, the first thing I did is added my pound of 96% ground beef to a bowl. I forgot to mention that the original recipe calls for Worcestershire sauce. I don't have any, so I'm skipping that, but you can definitely add it. I will have the original recipe on my website. So I have my pound of ground beef. I'm going to add a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, my oregano, and my basil. some salt and pepper, 
and one egg. I have a eight by eight, six by six, seven by seven, whatever you prefer baking dish. I did put a little bit of my marinara sauce in the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and mix this all together, roll them into meatballs and place them in the baking dish. Like a cargo, you will carry me. I just hope you Once you have your meatballs in your baking dish, go ahead and add the rest of your marinara sauce right on top. And then these are going into a 375 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the meatballs are cooked through. So our spaghetti squash is done. It is out of the microwave. It takes between eight and 10 minutes for it to microwave completely. I'm going to allow it to cool, shred it up, and I'll just place it into a storage container for the week. I just added some cheese to the top of the meatballs. We're going to throw this back in the oven on high until the cheese is melted and browned. The meatballs are out of the oven. These look so good. I cannot wait to have these this week. I went ahead and shredded up my spaghetti squash, placed it in a storage container. So what I'm going to do is add some spaghetti squash to a bowl, some of the meatball marinara cheese mixture, and basically we have a low carb healthy option of spaghetti and meatballs. I love spaghetti squash. By the way, one thing you can do with this that is so good, add a little bit of butter, salt, and Parmesan. Amazing. So good. Such a great way to get in veggies and lower the carbs a little bit. So I will put points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. Are you going to have spaghetti squash and meatballs yeah is that what you're gonna have for lunch too for a sweet treat this week i'm making lemon cinnamon rolls how perfect is that for the warmer weather so let me show you what you'll need like i mentioned a last couple of videos i've switched over from lecanto to allulose this is such a better sweetener alternative it's actually completely natural it's derived from figs and raisin so it says 90 percent fewer calories than sugar non-gmo tastes like sugar diabetic friendly all natural sweetener so there's 1.6 calories in a teaspoon so i would count this as zero points the only ingredient is non-gmo allulose so one ingredient, nice and clean, really good, does not spike up your blood sugar. I think it tastes a lot more like regular sugar. Lakanto can have that little bit of cooling effect from the erythritol. So I've really fallen in love with allulose. I picked this up right off of Amazon. That's where I have found it the most affordable. They also have it on Nutrition, but I'll link it for you. I do have the Lakanto powdered sugar alternative, self-rising flour because I'm going to make two ingredient dough for the dough of the cinnamon rolls. That will save points and add protein. So you're also going to need light butter. And then for my dough, I'm using Fa A 0% Greek yogurt, vanilla extract, one third less fat cream cheese, cinnamon, and a couple of fresh lemons. So to make the dough, I added two and three quarters cups of the self-rising flour. If you don't have self-rising flour, you can do regular flour. Just add your leavening agents like your baking soda and baking powder. And then, like I said, I have my fa a yogurt. I am first going to add just a tiny bit of vanilla extract. Since this is a cinnamon roll, I want the dough to be a little bit on the sweet side. I'm going to add a little bit of allulose as well, again, just to sweeten the dough. And then typically it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but I like to add my Greek yogurt in in sections and then mix and add as needed to get the right dough consistency. Sometimes I don't end up needing as much Greek yogurt as I needed flour. So like I said, I add a little bit at a time and then I'm going to just start mixing. Keep adding yogurt until I have that dough consistency. So here's the consistency of my dough. Once I go in with my hands and actually form it into a ball, it'll come together perfectly. Now for the filling, I'm going to add one half of a cup of softened light butter, three quarters of a cup of allulose, some cinnamon, and then about a tablespoon of fresh lemon zest. And then we're going to mix the filling all together. So I have my dough and I'm just going to roll it out into as much of a rectangle shape as we can get. And you do want it to be fairly on the thin side. And we're going to take that filling and we're going to spread it on top of our dough.
You do want to stay away from the edges about an inch or so, so when we roll it up, all of the filling doesn't kind of go spew outside of the dough. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more cinnamon right on top. And then we're going to roll this up the best that we can. I did put some saran wrap down on my counter so that the dough won't stick. It'll be a little bit easier to roll. So you're just going to start at the edge and just roll. And your goal is to have it look like a log. I'm going to kind of pinch the edges just a tiny bit. I'm doing, trying to do my best to keep the filling inside. We want 12 cinnamon rolls total, so I'm going to cut it in half. And then we're going to cut each half into three sections. So again, I'm going to cut it again, basically making four equal sections. And then each one of these sections, we will cut into three cinnamon rolls. And then we're going to place each cinnamon roll on a greased baking sheet. These cinnamon rolls are going into a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they're browned. And I'm going to go ahead and make the cream cheese icing while they're in the oven. So for the cream cheese frosting, I have four ounces of one third less fat cream cheese softened. To that, we're adding two cups of powdered sugar alternative, one quarter cup softened light butter, about a teaspoon of lemon zest, and then we want a tablespoon or so of fresh lemon juice. And then with our handheld mixer, we're going to mix until we have a frosting. So you want your frosting to be on the thick side. Make sure there's no clumps. Go ahead and set that aside until the cinnamon rolls come out of the oven. I just pulled the cinnamon rolls out. My house actually smells incredibly amazing. I'm going to allow these to cool completely and then we'll glaze them. Too much of emotion. on the lighting. Don't wanna pick a fight with. So I have frosted the cinnamon rolls. I mean, these look incredible. They give me Cinnabon vibes. Much less calories, much less points, silly, delicious sweetness. And that little pop of lemon is just absolutely lovely for this time of year. So I will put points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. Thank you for joining me for this week's meal prep. Again, all of today's recipes are on my recipe website. I will put that at the top of the description box. I will link allulose, everything else I shared with you in today's video, as well as nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And don't forget, come on over, join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. A happy Monday, friends. I hope you enjoy these recipes and it sets you up for a successful week. See you in the next one. Bye.